Hello, everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Hey, thanks for coming by again. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to have some fun together. We're going to take some time out and do a quick composition here um, over the next hour. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to just have the idea of let's practice some simple composition work where we're not really getting too uh, fanatical about creating a painting or a finished painting or a gallery painting. Although sometimes when you do a composition like this, sometimes you'll make a painting like this and it'll look so good, you'll it'll be fantastic. You can actually put put it in a frame, put a mat around it. So if it does come out good and you do this painting, do it. Definitely put a mat around it, put it in a frame, you know, bring it to a gallery, bring it to a show. Uh, maybe it's a great gift for like a, a holiday or a birthday or something like that. Or maybe you can hang it on your wall and that's your beautiful painting you'll have in your house with, you know, or your apartment. So I hope you'll have fun with it in that respect that it's going to be a composition where you're practicing these techniques of doing a beautiful rustic scene. But at the same time, if it comes out great, hey, you know what, celebrate it, put some, put it in a frame, have a, have a you know, great time of it. Uh, you know, uh, celebrate your successes as you go along and you're doing your paintings. If you find you have some good paintings, some good compositions, put them in frames, put mats on them, put them in frames, or even just put a mat on it and put it in a plastic, um, one of those plastic uh, jackets, you know what I mean? And just, you know, celebrate the successes of your watercolors and your paintings. Many of you are sending in paintings and they look absolutely beautiful. So I'm just so proud of everybody out there that are doing such beautiful paintings. And um, so here's the one we're gonna use, we're gonna do some rustic stonework a beautiful like, a white frame window with some brick over the top, like, like a brick header course across the top, some brickwork on this wall over here, some regular brick coursings with some stone mixed in, a uh, beautiful thatch roof. Again, this is something you might see at a bed and breakfast or a beautiful house out in like, let's say Europe somewhere in the beautiful countryside. Get into the mood of it all. Beautiful uh, clay tile roofs. Um, some beautiful brick chimneys here and brick clay uh, clay uh, chimney pots, um, some brush, some bushes over here, some abstract looking bushes, and we did some twigs and some branches and you know things with the bushes here. We did a little more interesting detail. Then we just washed this down here with a really light wash of water just to give it that watercolor feel, just a faded, nice, uh, uh, soft looking watercolor diffused look there. And uh, you'll see that it really is a fun painting to try. And if you just want to try certain pieces of the painting and not do the whole entire composition, that's fine too. If you're just starting out in watercolor and you've only been painting a couple weeks or a couple months or even one year, maybe it's better just to section off a small part. And we go into all that in the video. We show you where you can section off certain parts of your painting and practice just a few parts here and there so you're not overwhelmed with too much composition. But again, have fun with this, enjoy. We'll get started in just a second. All right, hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. Hey, you, you just saw the finished uh, product, the finished painting. We're just gonna take a little bit of time out here and do a, a fun practice type composition where we're gonna get in some time looking at rustic type stone brickwork. This might be a bed and breakfast, a small uh, motel, somewhere in Europe, beautiful old rustic architecture, thatch roofs, stone facades, brickwork in the facade mixed with stone, clay tile roofs, beautiful chimneys, brick chimneys, clay, clay pot uh, chimney flues, um, and chimney pots, uh, clay tiles again, shrubs, some gorgeous, uh, you know, scenery stuff you want to learn how to practice on but this might not be a real composition a real painting like a real you know this wouldn't be something you know you might be painting for a uh, show or a gallery or well, maybe it might turn out to be something that really looks fantastic for you and you might say wow yeah this is one of the best paintings I've ever done that that happens to me too sometimes I surprise myself and I just try a painting try something new or I might be just trying to get a, a feel for a subject matter and all of a sudden a great painting happens. So let's enjoy the, the success of our watercolors, whether we're just practicing compositions, where we're practicing techniques, methods, 
different looks, different feels for different subject matter, sometimes it turns out to be a great painting and you might say to yourself, wow, this is one of the best paintings I've ever done. So hey, enjoy th the process, that's all it is. Each time you put new paper on your, uh, either your sketchbook, if you have a sketchbook you're working in, or you're working on your artist board and you're putting down watercolor paper, you're taping it down, you're doing a new composition, you're trying out a painting, you're working along on one of our tutorials here, the same thing always applies. It's a learning process. You're just trying to practice up on your techniques, your skills, get familiar with more subject matter. Here you're getting familiar with, again, the rustic look of buildings, the stonework, the brickwork, thatch roofs, chimneys, clay tile roofs. You want to get a feel, bushes. Interesting subject matter that you want to learn, you know, a little bit about. Try practicing it one or two, you know, once or twice. Put this in your file, in your manila folder, or if you have a bucket, like a little uh, basket you keep your watercolors in. Keep this handy. This way, if you ever run across a, a painting you're going to do and you have rustic type scenery, you can come back to this and use this actual watercolor composition you're, you're going to do now. You're going to use this. You're going to save it. Put it in a file. In your files, you save it your, at your place, in your studio, in your house. You save it. And then this way you can refer to it. So you always want to save your work that you're always doing, no matter what it is. Save it, put it in a file, put it in a box, a shoe box, whatever it is, a big crate. You might have crates, you might have a, a nice plastic bin. You know, you put all your, all your stuff you're doing, all your work, all your paintings, your drawings. Keep saving all of it. Don't throw anything away unless you get super frustrated and you have to put it in the shredder or whatever or throw it out the window. But, you know, everyone gets frustrated once in a while, including myself. So anyway keep going you just keep doing some more composition so here let's practice on the rustic look the rustic look of buildings some European some beautiful European rustic maybe a bed and breakfast start thinking of some cool thoughts vacation European vacation rustic bed and breakfast start thinking of good thoughts happy thoughts you got to do that think of happy thoughts vacation thoughts you know and then we'll go from there and then you get into that excitement of it and we'll start doing it so here, very simple, we're going to do this a la prima. I'm going to start with my darks first. And again, you want to work from my finished painting. I always say that. Work from my finished painting, please. I can't show the photograph anyway for copyright issues. So I can't take someone else's photography and use it in my videos and not expect that someone might get upset with me because I'm taking their work and using it to benefit from it somehow or what have you. So again, we're going to get some darks. Burnt umber are the same darks. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Mix a nice dark here. This is some really super dark under here. This is the thatch roof. Look at that. That's all you need. Some good darks. Burn Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, Burn Sienna. Then we'll go with some Yellow Ochre. Mix that in there. And that's going to be up here. That's the thatch, where the light is striking the thatch up above. Here's the shadow underneath the uh, soffit of the thatch roof. So you have your thatch roof with a soffit underneath so that's the part that's underneath the roof eave and that's the darker dark and that's all it's just as long as you explain it it's a little bit this way here like so perfect excellent look at that a couple strokes of darks and and we have that all finished then we're going to take some more darks and we're just gonna lighten it up a little bit you can see I'm going a little lighter under there this is the shadow of the eave of the roof the thatch roof and I'm leaving a little bit of white paper there just so everything doesn't start converging in together and 
blossoming and blooming and cauli you know the cauliflowers you get when all the water starts blowing out on the paper here we don't want that let's keep it uh, neat so you leave a little bit of white paper like so just for till it sort sort of dries a little bit and then you can just join those two areas together like that but let's let's keep it like that now again we're doing darks first that's the main thing darker tonal values that means if you have tonal values we're always concerned about that remember that you always know you'll hear me harping on that constantly you'll get tired of me saying it all the time why is Chris always yelling at us or bothering us with tonal values you have to have them in your paintings because they really add tremendous beauty so if we're looking at it this way tonal values let's say we just keep it simple four tonal values in a painting let's say we use this this is your complete super dark okay that would be here then you get a little lighter that's like here under here we're starting to get a little lighter here it'll dry lighter too as we go you can also use a little bit of tissue to lighten up a spot if you have to like that just a little tidbit of secrets there and the watercolor secrets here now the third tonal value would be a light a very light light like that and this here would be the white of the paper if you want to go another one you can say this would be the white of the paper and then maybe this is just one more step just a little bit a little bit of a touch of tone and value there and then this is the white paper Okay, white paper here. And you got one, two, three, four. Super dark, black, almost dark black. That's the mix here we make. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna mixture. We did that right here. That's your darkest tonal value up here. Then as we step it down to go a little lighter, then we're under here. We're here on this one. Now we're going to start using these with some of our stonework and the sky. And then some of the white paper we might leave in here and there. We'll see. We're, we have a white window over here. We'll we'll see how that works out. But you saw the finished painting, so you, you kind of know the, the routine here. So just wanted to go over that, your tonal values. Let's make a little note here. Tonal values. And then we put that up here. That's our... We've got to have those in our painting, so we're always thinking, okay, where's the darks? Where's the lights? We're doing a la prima painting here. So we could say this is a la prima. A la prima. That means we're painting it all at one time. We're not doing any kind of fancy glazing techniques where we're going lights all over and then darks on top of lights. We're just going straight in there and painting everything at one time a la prima all at one time and we're going to start with our darks first so we're doing our darks first here we go we're all set and now let's get these here now we're, we're safe to go in and join those areas and we're going to continue on here more darks we always want to keep our darks going like that there we go Okay, now let's keep looking. I'm looking at my photograph. Where are there more darks? Well, I see a lot of them. This is sort of an early morning scene or maybe a sunset scene. But it definitely is a either early morning or late afternoon scene because the there's more darks and it's not that bright. So we always remember that. If you see a lot of darks in a painting, it's probably a lot of shadows or a lot of lower light, not as much light. So I'm noticing here, I'm just going to keep modulating my colors. I want to go with different colors here. Just that's all you have to remember. Mix your colors, cools and warms. Let's start getting in some cerulean blue. I don't want to 
I want to make sure I'm getting in some warm and cools. Let's go with some cadmium red. Let's do some cadmium reds here and there. The more colors you can add in there, you're going to definitely thank me that I'm telling you that. Okay, this is darker over here. This is very dark actually over here. I'm just looking at my photograph. Again, I can't show you the photograph. I wish I could. But you'll thank me later because if someone decides to really get down and dirty with me and start taking all my money, I won't have any money to be able to afford doing videos. But no worries, I'll, I'll work it out. So, here we can already see we're doing the chimney. Darks, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And we're trying to get these darks in over here. And again, you can leave a little bit of white paper if you need to. Raw umber, yellow ochre here. That looks good. Yellow ochre over here, the light. There it is. Okay, now you can do touch-ups later to the details if you have to. Don't feel like you have to get in all your details in the beginning. Certain areas you can just let it go. Don't worry about it. Here we're going to do some stonework. Okay, we're going to make a stone shape there. Do some stone shapes as you go. Now we're going to do some stone work over here. Do a little splashing. And again, you're having fun with this. You're just noticing what I'm doing here. I'm mixing stone colors, browns, blues, some greens, olive green maybe. We're going to do some greens in here. Now that I notice I'm going to add some greens in my painting, let me start. Let me add some greens up here, just a touch. Go in there just a little bit. If it's dry, it's good to go. If it's dry, you can add a little green. Like that. You can add a little green to your chimney. Okay, so we're getting all the darks in. And... I'm going to keep working on my darks here. Okay, there's certain areas I'm looking at and saying, you know what? I'm still seeing a lot of darks. So remember, if you're seeing lots of darks, you got to paint them in there. You can't say to yourself, I'm not going to pay attention to my tonal values. You have to always pay attention to your darks and your lights. You have to really key in on that. You have to really focus in on that if you're looking at a photograph, if you're looking at um, a picture something online, outdoors, if you're painting outdoors, whatever it is, always key in on these tonal values of your painting. What are the darks? What are the lights? One advantage of painting a la prima is you really, you start with the darks. So it kind of like, it's easier when you're painting a la prima because you're starting with your super darks and you really can see that. It's real clear when you're painting darks. You can kind of see, all right, here in my palette, I've really got the darks in the palette here and it's really evident that I have it. That's the darks right there. I mean, that's just, you know, that's your darks. You have that. And you keep working your darks in, and then eventually you lighten up. And once you lighten up, you, you know, you can, it's a little easier because you have your darks to kind of set the pace for your painting. So that's what we're doing here. 
We're setting the pace for our painting. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm going to do a couple mixtures over here. It gets a little bit over here. There's some darks over here. There might be some sort of structure over here. So I'm going to just put that, maybe a line over here. There's a structure or something over there. Not quite sure what it is. I'm not going to worry about it. Some parts of your painting you can just leave them be. Leave some real loose, non-detailed areas that just have some paint and some wash on, like over here. You, you don't want to paint everything in superior detail. You want to leave some areas that you can relax when you're looking at it and say, oh, it's just a nice wash there, but who knows what it is. That's fine. Okay. We're going to continue on. We know this is stonework here. Burnt sienna. Some bricks, too. This is more stone over here, I think. This is more stone over here on this area. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave that the way it is. Okay, so now we have some stone over here. Some stone wall. Like that. Okay, let's keep working on our chimney up here. Now we have some more red and dark. We have a little bit of red up here, like that. Some burnt sienna and some red. So now we start to... You can do some bricks like this if you want, very loosely. Like that. And then some yellow ochre and red. So don't feel like you have to break out a square brush. You can use this if you want. Like that. You can let this dry 100% and then go over with a lighter wash. That's fine. Always remember, with watercolor, you're always in control. All you want to think about is can I go back in and do more work to this later? And if the answer is yes, then you can do that. Most often with watercolor, you can you can go back in and do more work to your painting later. And so that's the point I want to make here is you could go back in and do more washes on top of the ones we're doing now. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that some yellow ochre on top of this reddish brick here. Because this is in light, and this is in shadow over here on the right. So I want to do some shadowing over here. Burnt. Oh, this is some French ultramarine blue. Some uh, purple, maybe. Use some purple. Now that I'm going to use some purple in my painting, I'm going to go everywhere with it. So I'm going to splash it around, put some up here. Very subtly though, you just add a little bit here and there. And that's good enough, it'll work out fine. And then up here we have a gorgeous, beautiful clay, clay chimney pot. Let's add that in, like so. And then it's darker on this side, and it goes quite a bit dark. You can't believe it. Wow. Wow, look at that. And if it gets too dark on this side over here on the right, you can always lift up a little paint like that. A little bit of burnt sienna maybe. OK. 
Okay, good. More darks. This is more like a, a little bit of a... This is the roof on this side here. It's a little bit too dark. So I lift up with a little bit of paint. There we go. That's good. We're going to let this dry a little bit. We'll come right back. Let's take a little break. We've been painting 20 minutes or so. That's a great time for a break. And I always mention too, before we take a break, everybody, please subscribe. It's real simple. You just click on the button below on the right hand side of your screen that says subscribe. Once you subscribe, you're going to get all our videos here every week. We're creating new videos. We're doing every type of subject matter, everything watercolor. So just think about it. Any type of watercolor type of painting, you're going to be on this channel here. You're going to have it. Whether we're doing some rustic scenes like this with some architecture, we do seascapes with the oceans, we do boats, we do the beach scenes, we do everything here. We do landscapes and trees and beautiful skies. We do figure painting, we do um, portrait painting. We also uh, do cityscapes. We do scenes of beautiful cities, buildings. We cover it all here and it's all watercolor. So please, if you subscribe, you'll be right here along with us, learning all the techniques and methods you need to create any type of watercolor painting your heart desires. That's all it is, is anything you want to paint. We cover all the techniques. So it doesn't matter what type of painting you're painting, whatever subject matter it is, the techniques are all the same. All the techniques are the same. The methods are the same, no matter what you're painting. It's just a matter of learning those techniques and methods here over and over on my channel. And then whenever you're painting a painting, you're just going to default. You're going to go right to those methods and techniques, no matter what you're painting, and you're going to have success with your paintings. So stick with me. Trust me. I guarantee your painting is going to look more beautiful. And we're going to take a quick break. Again, always remember, take breaks when you're painting. Don't try to paint for four hours straight. It doesn't go good. I've done it many times, and I know the, the results. Please take breaks every 15, 20 minutes or every half an hour. Take a break, stretch, get a drink of water, cup of coffee, tea, whatever you like. But, you know, take some breaks. Come back the next day. Leave your painting go. Don't worry about it. Watercolor, you can paint now, today, and then leave it for two weeks and come back two weeks later. You might go on vacation and come back two weeks later and you'll be fine. You just pick right back up where you left. All right, so enough with my babbling here. I hope you're having a fun time. We're having a good time here. We're going to just let some of this dry and we'll come back and keep working. But this is the beauty of uh, a la prima. You just paint and you stop and you can come back a week later, a month later, a year later, or an hour later and you're going to be okay. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome again. Thanks for sticking in here, doing the work. We're, we're practicing together. We're going to create more beautiful paintings and this is one way we're going to create more beautiful paintings we're going to practice on some subject matter that we might not ordinarily paint a whole lot right so this is like a rustic um bed and breakfast scene beautiful like a gorgeous architecture stone concrete bricks uh chimneys beautiful architecture here you might see this in europe the countryside of europe beautiful architecture thatch roof here we're using a, a thatch roof type of design. So what I'm saying is if you can do this exercise, stick with me here, create this exercise, do it, do it to the best of your ability. And then you take this and you set it in a folder and you keep that with you when you're watercolor painting in your studio. You might bring it with you too into the field if you're going to do some outdoor painting. But the thing is you'll, you'll have like a template. You'll, You'll do this exercise once or twice or maybe three times. You'll paint along with us here. Then you'll have this in a folder in your bag, in your duffel bag, whenever you go out. Or if you're in your studio, you'll say, oh, I remember we with Chris Petrie, we did a, a rustic scene with all that beautiful stonework and brickwork and thatch roofs and chimneys. And now I'm trying to do a painting with all those things in it, like a house or a castle or a, a building, whatever it is. And you just take this out, this painting out 
and you look at it and say, oh yeah, I remember the colors. And you'll look at the colors and go, yeah, I remember what colors we used. I remember what technique we used. We used a la prima. You might write down a la prima on your note paper when you're doing your painting. And uh, you might write down your tonal values. You might, you might make a little s sketch of your tonal values as well. It's kind of like if you have a sketchbook or if you want to do this in a sketchbook. That's a great idea too. If you want to do this in a sketchbook that you might have, create this painting in a sketchbook and then you put the notes in there too, just like this. And this is what the old masters and all the great painters over history, over long periods, hundreds, thousands of years, all the great master painters would go out, paint on location in beautiful areas. They'd paint buildings, the oceans, skies, fields, you name it. They painted it, figures, whatever it was. And what they did is they just made notes. Ah, I'm going to do this one a la prima. And they'd write that down on their sketchbook with their painting with it along with it so they'd have their notes and their paintings together so that when they went back in the studio they could go yeah let me create a painting and now I'm going to use all the things I learned in the field a la prima I'm going to use that technique I understand what it is tonal values I want to make sure I'm getting all my tonal values and that type of thing will really help you tremendously and you can even keep track of your colors you might take some color swatches and put those on your your sketchbook and say you know this color was you know, um, yellow ochre with a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and a little bit of um, French ultramarine blue. This was more, you know, uh, just yellow ochre and um, maybe some, you know, some red, some cadmium red. You might write down your, or you just might make your colors and say, okay, here's the colors I used. I used cadmium red. I used French ultramarine blue. I used even a dab of color. You'll look at the color in your sketchbook and you'll know what it is you'll go oh yeah that's that's cerulean blue or that's french ultramarine blue you can identify it as you look at your palette and your notes so you can do all that kind of cool stuff really helps but if you don't want to get all too fussy and do all this fancy stuff not a problem as long as you're doing this exercise and you leave this in your sketch or you leave this either in a sketchbook or in a, in a folder in your studio you'll have it to refer back to and then whenever you come across a painting you're going to do where you have to create some stonework, some brickwork, some thatch roofs, some chimneys, you can just look right back to it and go, oh yeah, I did that already. The chimney, how did I do it? Okay, boom. I used yellow ochre and I used some blues and darks for the shadows. Chimney pot, oh yeah, I remember I used, I can see it right here, I used uh, cadmium red and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre mixed and then a little bit of darker French ultramarine blue for the shadow side. Follow me? Does that make sense? If you keep your paintings that you do now in your sketchbook or in your notes, you'll have it for future reference. Real important. Please do that. Whatever you do, save your paintings. Your paintings are valuable. Your practice paintings are extremely valuable. All right, let's continue on here. So I notice right away when I'm looking at my picture, I have a really dark shadow under this part of the roof. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put in that shadow. Use some purple here. I'll use some red even too. We'll add a little red in there. And if you find you added too much color or something like that, it doesn't look great, no problem. Just take some tissue or some paper towel. You fold it like this and make a little line, you know, kind of like fold it, make it like a point, a chisel edge. You just lift it up. There you go. And you go over it with some darks, like that. Okay, so that's the shadow underneath this edge of the clay tile roofs over here. Some tiles, it might be some slate or clay tiles along this roof here. And then over here, yellow ochre. These are clay tiles here, so I'm going to get those in. I'll use burnt umber. Yellow ochre and cadmium red. And then a little bit of um, cerulean blue. And I'm going to start making the, the other uh, tiles over here. 
clay tiles are over here too on this part of the roof and they're similar to the brick shapes that we were we were thinking about before we'll go over that just in, in a few seconds I'll, I'll, we'll take a break actually let's we'll work we'll work a little bit more and we'll take a break and I'll kind of discuss with you a quick little handy um, tip on creating tile and brick brick and tile okay so that it's easier for you so I'm just going to continue making some brick shapes here and again don't forget you can always glaze over another you can glaze over any wash you're doing with any type of subject matter again later once it dries so don't feel like you're ever stuck if you need to go over and glaze with something you'll be able to do that so here I'm just creating a now I'm going to add a little bit of red here and there. So let me add some excitement. Then along this top piece here, there's some light catching the edge. And this is a dark here. So that that's like a dark, dark along that top edge of that clay tile where the light's striking it from this way. So the light's coming this way. I'm very sorry, can you forgive me? I might have forgot to put the light insignia here. We always try to do that with my channel here. Where is the light coming from? It's coming from this way, from, from the, out there. It's coming this way. The light's shining basically in our eyes. So this is like if we're set up with our easel over here on the grass by these buildings and we're painting and drawing, we're having a great time. Maybe we're here on location actually at a bed and breakfast or somewhere we're staying and we're having a vacation and the light's shining this way and it's early in the morning so the sun's probably down low in the sky over here somewhere far beyond where we can't see it. So it's not like it's shining directly in our eyes. The sun's low in the sky early in the morning, but it is shining this way. So we're seeing that we're in the shadow areas over here in this painting. So we're in the cool shadows in this painting. Let's remember that. That's important to remember. And this insignia will tell us. This is another thing you want to put in your, in your sketchbook or your notes. You know, when you're doing your painting, always try to put your light insignia. Where's the light coming from? If you can do that right in the beginning of your painting, then if you ever get confused on where you're going to add a shadow, you can just, oh yeah, this light's coming from the in front of us this way. Okay, so we're going to continue here. And let's do this. Some splashing here. We're going to do some stonework. Now the fun part, let's get some yellow ochre. We'll do some yellow ochre, raw sienna, maybe even two raw sienna here. Yeah, let's do raw sienna with a little bit of sap green, or uh, olive green. Yeah, raw sienna. And I told you before, does this make sense? Now we can add some wash. It's all dry over here. So now we can add some of that raw sienna on these bricks over here. And there you have it. And you can add some more over here too. Looks good. And again, once this is dry, and it is dry, this chimney dried, you know, like 20 minutes ago when we took our break. Another great reason to take breaks, things dry. So you're never going to be worried about too much blossoming and blooms and cauliflowers and all those good things, those bad things. They could be good too. They look good once in a while. There we go. So I'm adjusting my tonal values. I needed to make this a little bit darker like this over here. It was too light. It was like this. So I went and did that. Okay, over here, 
I'm going to start to work on some more stonework. You know what? Let's work on more darks. Again, a la prima, we're trying to get those darks first. Let's make a note of that too. This might be just another little quick note we make. Darks first. So now if I stick to my game plan, let's make darks first, we're going to be in a better shape here. Let me, let me see if I can find a square brush, a small square brush. Do I have a small square brush anywhere? Uh, yes, this will work. So I have a small square brush here, flat brush. And I'd like to make some bricks. Um, burnt sienna and cadmium red. A bit of burnt umber. And a touch of cerulean blue down there. Rinse off the brush. Let's get some bricks in here. Look at this, how easy this is. Wow, look at that. <laughs> All you have to do to paint a brick is get a flat brush. Don't suffer and try to paint bricks with round brushes. Bust out one of those brushes you've been leaving in the drawer there <laughs> that you haven't used in a year. Come on, break it out. Go find that brush. Look at that. That fat, flat brush is perfect. Let's go. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. See, this is why I really enjoy watercolor. We have a good time here. So there we go. We're off and running. And we make some bricks. And we don't want to make them all the same. Make one kind of... The mason might have decided he wanted to make a brick on an angle. Like that. Or two. He was thinking like an artist. He didn't want to leave everything looking straight. Shadow under there. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? You can create bricks real quick. That's the fun way to make bricks, everybody, for this type of painting. I did a couple bricks up here with the round brush, but it's a little more difficult. And then there's even a smaller brush I have somewhere on my table here. Let me see if I can find it. I don't know. I don't see it right now. Maybe it's over there. Uh, nope. Mm, let's see. Where do I have that one? All right. I'm giving up. I did not give up. Don't give up. Here it is, look. We even have a smaller one there. We're going to use this one just in a minute. Let's put this over here. Okay, so we have our larger bricks there. And then here we just have a few. A couple broken pieces of brick they put in there like that. And another one there. And then we have one here, and now we're going to start seeing the bricks like that. And again, if you're doing these rustic scenes like this and you need to do brickwork, now's your time. And I did a lot of... This tends to be the pattern. Get some... I want to make sure I mix it up a little bit not all cools let's mix in a little darks with that warm and cool all the time okay there you go and let's keep going now not everywhere these bricks are They are kind of haphazard. They're not really everywhere. And then there's some up here. And that's where you have fun. Look at that. They're here and there, but not everywhere. And that's the most important thing. To try to just mix it up. Down here is a couple. And there's more up here.
Then we take a little bit of mix here and just splash a little. That's the stonework with the cement. You want to splash on some splashes like that. Mix it up a little bit. A little bit of blue. You need a bigger brush to do splashing. Usually you can't go you can't get really good splashes so much with smaller brushes like this, like these small flat brushes. They're really tough to splash with, so you need a little bit bigger of a brush, and then we'll go back to our number six round brush. And then you get more water and more paint on there. And then you can just get a lot more splashing going. So we just splash around. And we'll do some shadowing over here. That might be good. And again, you're just getting your practice in on your um, stonework and your uh, brickwork and your clay tile roofs and your thatch roof and your chimneys and your chimney pots and your windows and your bushes. So you're doing all kinds of cool stuff here, all in the same painting. And I just want to make sure I get some darks in there, like that. We wanted that dark there, so that's kind of a cool thing. And some yellow ochre. Splashing always works well. So we're doing some splashing. Some purple here, mixing up our colors. Now what you can do is follow along here on this with me. We're already at 20 minutes, so we're sort of already um, we're already painting for 20 minutes now. We're coming up on a break, and I'm trying to do some mixing of colors here on the brick, splashing. There is stone over here. I'll make some stones, and that's part of making stones is splashing. You got to splash a lot, and then at some point you kind of stop on the splashing and you just start to, you start to get the uh, the stone feel round stones small ones large ones mix in a little bit of red with your stonework try to mix and mingle all your And then what I might do is work in my darks over here with my window. Let me get that dark in with my window, French Ultramarine Blue, and then we'll take a break. So this is the last thing we do before we take our break. French Ultramarine Blue, straight paint, no water, no water, straight paint, French Ultramarine Blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Get a nice dark and we're going to make our window and we're going to leave in the white panes of the window, the wood glazings here, we're going to do our glazing panels here, doesn't have to be perfect, just try to get in your three and three, three and three, you just remember that, three here, three, like that, Excellent. That's all you need. Now you have to let this dry and you don't want to do anything around here. This has to dry 100% if you're doing these glazings like this. Like that. Let that dry 100% before you start going around it with anything, okay? But that's really a nice, powerful dark. Can you see that? Can you see that? Just that real powerful dark there in those window glazings 
really looks great. It kind of really gives a lot of excitement right to that area right here in the middle of the stonework and all the, the wall of stone and bricks. Looks beautiful. Okay, let's take a break. And again, I always mention, hey, please subscribe right down here on the bottom of the right hand side. If you subscribe, you're going to get all these videos week after week, month after month, and year after year. Your watercolors are going to get better 100%. So don't worry about it. Watercolor, watercolor does not you won't learn watercolor overnight. It takes it takes years. Uh, you know, I really have to say that. I don't like to be, you know, negative with anybody. Some people might think I can learn this in like a month or two. No way. It takes years to learn watercolor, but if you practice the fundamentals just like this over and over, week after week, month after month, and year after year, after two, three years, you're already rolling and you've got all the techniques down, the methods, the basics, and then you go from there and you'll be off and running and doing beautiful work. So don't worry about what people tell you if it's easy, it's not easy. And some people say, oh, that person's gifted, I'm gifted, you're gifted, and someone else is gifted, whoever. Don't believe it, it's all just practice. Keep practicing each week, each month, and just keep going and going, trying little pieces. You might not have to, don't create this whole picture. If you have to, just paint the window with some bricks. Start off that way. If you're just starting out, don't stress. Don't stress. Watercolor is fun. Have fun with watercolors. If you, if you find that I'm doing stuff that's too much and you get like frustrated, don't worry. Just do small, super small sections. Take one little section. I'll show you how you do it. <clears throat> you just take one small section and you section it off. Look at that. Maybe you just do this. Try out the window, some bricks over here, some stonework and splashing, and eventually we're going to get to the bushes underneath this window here. Try just this one area. Don't worry about the chimneys and all that other stuff. If you're just starting out, make, make things small. Just try small pieces of the larger puzzle. Maybe you try this first on a separate piece of watercolor paper. Then you might say, okay, now I'm going to try these chimneys. And you do these chimneys like this. And then if you do that, then you have the whole painting, really, because those are the two more, you know, complicated sections. Some bricks over here and the window. And then the chimneys. Look at that. So you practice it in two different sections, and then if you want to do the whole thing, fine. If not, you just leave these two paintings separate in your studio, and you say, okay, here's some chimneys. Perfect. Here's a window with some brick and some stone wall. Perfect. You have two paintings for the price of one. And hey, you have it in your file. Keep it with you in your studio. Do not throw your paintings away. Keep them with you. Have fun with it. And again, don't get frustrated. Watercolor is fun. So happy painting. Let's come back in just a few minutes. Let this dry a little bit and, and we'll get started again. Okay, everybody, we're back, and uh, I just wanted to also mention, too, we're using Fabriano here. Fabriano. So I'll write that down, maybe on the um, paper here. We'll, we'll make some notes. We'll make some more notes here. Let's do um, Fabriano. Fabriano Artistico. Fabriano Artistico, rough, texture paper, rough paper, rough paper and extra white. So that's something you can use, you'll get similar results if you're using different style watercolor papers you might come up with a different look a little bit, it might vary just a little bit and that's no problem at all. Whatever paper you have, as long as it's watercolor paper you're in good, you're in great standing. Okay. So now we're going to continue on here. We're already almost finished here. Let's just finish up. And again, this is practice. This is a compositional piece. We're not here to, who knows, it might turn out great. And it might be a, a great piece for you that you might put in a gallery or a show or sell or give as a gift. I'm not going to say that. You know, don't underestimate how your compositions and paintings can turn out. Because sometimes, you know, you can just be practicing on something and it turns out phenomenal. 
and I'm sure many of you are doing phenomenal practice and compositional work, no question. I've seen some of you are sending in pictures to me online on, on my email. You're doing beautiful work out there, just phenomenal work. So I'm really happy with everyone that sent me in pictures. Everyone's doing beautiful work and really, really, really understanding what we're doing all the time here on my channel. And it's proof that when I look at your paintings, I say, yeah, they understand completely what I'm doing. They're practicing all the methods and techniques I've been showing here for five years. I've been on, on YouTube now. Many of people that are, most people that are sending in photographs of their finished paintings, they're looking fantastic. They're looking excellent. So great work out there, everybody. Thanks for sending me your paintings, and uh, I'm really happy and thankful that you do send me them, and I'm just really impressed. So I'm just going to continue on here with um, finishing up this painting. So we have... Um, Everything is going really well. We have our dark window glazings that look great. We're going to paint around that window to make it appear. So we're using negative shape painting. First thing I'm going to do is empty my water. So I always try to keep fresh clean water in my water bucket. That's important. Um, so I just remember that. Once in a while I'm emptying my bucket and putting in fresh water. Um, I don't feel I need to change any, I, I feel I don't need to clean up the palette too much actually because we're doing like rustic look here, it's lots of mixes of colors, nothing is really going to affect us by not cleaning the palette. I think we're in good shape that way. So let's do like we said, um, let's, let's do some painting around the window here. So I'm going to do some a stone there maybe, there's a square stone, and there's a little bit of green and blue. And there's some red and raw umber even too. Like so. Same thing, maybe a stone over there, maybe a darker stone like that. So you can make a couple um, stone shapes around your window to kind of make it like a, a focal point. And you could take some smaller stones, make some small stones here and there. That's always looking, it looks great if you just make large, um, large stones and then small stones around it. Like that. And that's a good way to uh, create some beautiful stonework. Maximum square feet of stone is always good. So it's uh, good to get everything mixed, the colors here we don't want to let's keep mixing our purples in there too we want to get some purple colors here and there try to make sure you mix your colors all throughout the painting the same ones you're using and I'm not going to get much more some stonework here the feel of stonework large, small, and I think that's pretty good. I think we're good on that. Now let's get some darks mixed here. Burnt umber, maybe some 
yellow uh, sap green, burnt sienna. We'll hold our brush like this. So we're gonna hold our brush like normally we're holding our brush like a pencil most of the time. So most of you, when you're doing your techniques, you realize most of you, when you're painting, you're going to probably find yourself, you're holding your brush like a pencil, like I do. I mean, if you're watching me all the time, you're probably going to just wind up holding your brush the way I do. And then you'll use your pinky sometimes to rest on the paper to get a little more, you know, you, you have a little more versatility like that. We'll hold, you know, holding your pinky on the paper. And then, you know, sometimes you have to be careful not to put your, lean your hand into the painting and so forth. And that's why breaks are important. So you can let some of the paint dry. But then sometimes you're going to want to hold your brush like this, sort of like this, to get your, or you can hold it like this, to get some of these bushes. These bushes are like burnt sienna and burnt umber, straight paint, no, 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 uh, please don't use any water right now. Just use straight paint and you're going to do the bushes over here, like that you know flick the brush up like this like that do a little finger painting tap on the like that tap on some of the paint like so and that's good then we'll get our needlepoint brush like so our needlepoint brush that's the very very fine pointed brush we use all the time on my channel here you have to have this brush to capture the really beautiful details of your watercolors. If you're using a, a really wide brush like this, you're not going to capture the same detail. So if you want to add that extra bit of fine detail, please, you, you need to use the proper brushes. Then I take the brush and I move my, thing, my hand up on the top of the brush up here. So now I'm going from like the pencil, you know how we use it like this, a pencil, a lot of times we use our pen. We're painting like this. When you're using your needlepoint brush, you're gonna slide your hand up on the brush and hold it at the top. And then you're gonna hold it up like this, straight up over the painting. And then you just, you move your brush in a, a fashion of doing this. And this way you're getting in all those beautiful bushes and the twigs and branches underneath. And that's gonna really give you a great look you want. You just roll the brush around until you get that nice point like so. And then you just get some of those twigs and branches. And that's what we're looking for. And you don't have to do too many. Just a few really. You could do a couple up in here. I'll do some more over here. This looks really good over here. Kind of looks really nice if we can get some of this branches and things over here and then we use again the same then you can get some darker darks here burnt sienna French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, get a couple darks in there. There we go. You can do a tree over here just to make it look interesting. Practice your tree shapes with your branches and twigs like so. There's one over here, it kind of sets this back a little bit, makes it look a little more interesting. And then maybe over here a couple, and then a tree over here. But not too many. Again, you have to really exercise your self-control with this. You don't want to keep doing a zillion of these, and then it's not going to look good. So I think we're good. We're okay there. Maybe one like this. Across this way here, just another, maybe a small. Like that. Just an indication, like that. Perfect. Then we might take our sap green, maybe a little bit of viridian green, a couple splashes over here. 
Just suggestions of some green bushes and twigs and stuff. Now if you're adding some of that, definitely best to add it up here too. Why not? Who's going to ever question us? We're the artists. <laughs> okay, we're the artists. You can put your happy colors wherever you want. No one's going to say anything. Alright, now, again, we're in we're in the final bits of our painting here. And I'm just going to try to get some splashes of color on here, but I don't want to go too much. Alright, some raw umber here. There's some greens down here. Let's use some raw umber. Raw umber and sap green. We put in some color. Maybe I just go across like this. Just like that. No worries. Just have some fun Splash on some paint, then you splash on some additional yellow oak, uh, raw umber and uh, olive green. Splash that on. Okay, and then you want to add some burnt sienna to that. So again, I splash on some burnt sienna. Um, a little bit of cerulean blue, warm and cool everywhere. So I'm getting more abstract now in the bottom of the painting. And then I'm trying to just get some tonal value on this here. So we're using this and this tonal value here. Again, the light's coming from behind all these buildings, so you're not going to see too many white bits of paper over here. And I'll get some darker greens. So I'll use some olive green, cerulean blue. that. Add a little bit into this too. And you can see maybe there's some darks in here too. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, some dark darks. And that's all if you can get some darks in there too, just some shadowing. Doesn't have to be the focal points up here. So down here you can do abstract looking washes. Splash some water on there, just let some water run off. See I'm just dumping some water on here, on this bottom portion, just like that. Let it just be all watery down there, that's fine. And then we'll mirror that same look up here. Only thing is up here you have to be careful around the chimney that you don't let that chimney get too um, moist with water wash. Otherwise it's going to just blend in and make a mess. So let's just do this. And some like that. And then let it just work its way. Let the water do the work here. Okay, you just work that water all the way around the chimney like that. Now here what you can do, all right, let's get some of this here. I want to, I'm going to take some raw sienna, 
and give this a warm wash here all the way across the top of this okay so now I'm doing my raw sienna wash over everything over here it's in shadow I'm gonna leave that window white this looks good So now this all becomes warm, like a warm wash on this side over here. And again, the light's coming from across out there this way. So really the only white thing I see is really the, the paint on the window. Like that. And then you can come back with a little paper towel or tissue. Just like that and you don't worry if there's a like I said this is a fun exercise really it's a composition don't worry about things too much don't here we're just blotting up a little bit of water I'm gonna blot up a little bit of water over here on the chimney areas so that we don't activate all that wash again and it becomes all blurry and cauliflowers and blossoms and balloons out into the wash of the sky this might be a place too where if you have a blow dryer you can blow dry really quickly once you do your wash. But I just dab it up the same way with um, and then I just dab up the bottom here where we had some puddles at the bottom of our painting. So you can kind of see that You can add a little bit of texture, you know, just doing a little bit of finger painting here. Like so. And that's it. You get a nice, beautiful, rustic look to this. And again, if you feel like it's too much to do this whole painting, don't worry about it. Section it off. We showed you before. You just section it off. Do a few parts to it, you know. First start out and just do the window. Maybe just do the window like that. You know, you do the window like that, or like this, or right in the center. You know, you comp do a composition. Maybe you do this, like that. Then you do the chimneys, maybe, like that. And that's all. You do a couple sections. Work at your own pace, whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, And then you've uh, you've uh, had a good time. You've enjoyed it. It's been fun, and it's been really fun here working with all of you. Thanks so much for um, working along with me, joining along, for subscribing, for leaving all the beautiful comments in my comment section of my YouTube uh, channel. I really appreciate everyone. I hope your paintings are going beautifully. I know they are. And I know you're getting better and better each day as you practice and work at it. And again, it's not easy. Watercolor is not a simple medium. But if you're doing exercises constantly, doing small compositions, you'll get the hang of it uh, before you know it. And you'll be having a great time. And if you're just watching for the sake of variety and watching just for fun, I used to watch videos and on TV. I used to love watching artists, oil painters and watercolor painters on TV when I was a young boy. That's what gave me a lot of my inspiration that later in years helped me to really have a lot of fun and, and get more interested in, in painting and being an artist. So if you're just watching for fun, maybe you're just here to watch for fun for now, but maybe in a couple years or so you'll, you'll pick it up. Who knows? But in any case, happy painting, everybody. Enjoy, and we'll see you on the next video.